In the previous session, we discussed about the credit risk and in that session, we discussed about the what is credit risk and what are those different sources of the credit risk. And as per the Basel norms, we are the banks are also exposed to different other type of risk like your market risk, operational risk, liquidity risk, etcetera. In today's uh, this class or in this particular session, we will be covering of two different type of risk. One is your market risk and other one is the operational risk. So, already uh, what we have discussed in the previous class that the operational risk is also playing a very major role in today's context because of the complexity in the market system and the heavy reliance on the technology and heavy reliance on the different kind of activities which is not operated by the human being or which is not driven by the only human capital. So, because of that we are exposed to certain kind of risk which is arising due to technology and all and as well as the frauds which are man made and uh, the failure of the other aspects natural calamities and all these things. Then market risk is obviously there which is considered as a systematic risk which is affecting the business of any organization at any circumstances. So, because of that the Basel committee has given due importance to this type of risk uh, whenever we talk about the measurement or the exposure towards the risk by the commercial bank. So, let us see what do we mean by the market risk. Whenever you talk about the market risk, the market risk is nothing but how the current and potential uh, earnings of a particular company or particular bank is getting affected due to the change in any kind of macroeconomic fundamentals. And the macroeconomic fundamentals can be anything. Here we are talking about three things, one is your interest rate stock price or bond price anything and foreign exchange rate. If there is a fluctuation in the interest rates, then obviously the value of the balance sets items of the commercial banks get affected. If there is a fluctuation in the stock prices or the equity prices or any bond prices, then the value of the investments get affected. If the value of investments gets affected, then automatically the profit and the shareholders value gets affected. And if because that is a we are living in a globalized economy or the markets are integrated, we have the existence of many multinationals, we are highly exposed to the exchange rate risk because the expose or the risk always involved whenever the operations are happening in many countries. So, if there is a fluctuations, fluctuations in the exchange rate, then obviously, the balance sheet of that particular company or the particular industry gets affected and because of that it also affects the, the profile uh, or the value of the balance sets items of the particular commercial bank. There are many other factors like it can also happen due to the inflation, it can also happen related to the other macroeconomic indicators, but here mostly the market risk arises due to the major factors like interest rate, the equity prices or the other asset prices in the financial system, then we have the foreign exchange rate. So, these that is why we have considered these three aspects here, uh, or we can also consider the other thing. So, if you remember that whenever we go for the asset pricing, in the asset pricing basically the beta which is considered as a market risk and you remember this risk is relatively difficult to diversify. In the portfolio management process, it is difficult to diversify but the banks basically have to maintain or to adjust their assets and liabilities by that they can less exposed to or even if they are exposed to this, but at least the mismatch between, between assets and liabilities will not be taken place if the proper kind of strategy has been implemented for the uh, management of the market risk in that particular bank. Then coming back to one by one that whenever we talk about the interest rate risk. The interest rate risk is what? It basically shows the potential variability in a bank's net interest income 
and market value of equity due to changes in the level of the market interest rate. How? Because you see once the interest rate gets changed, if the interest rate increases, let i is equal to interest rate that will increase, then the net interest income will increase. the interest income will increase and interest expenses also will increase. But if the interest income bearing assets are more than the interest bearing expenses, then the net income of the particular bank can increase. If it is vice versa, then income also will go down. And already we know that whenever you talk about the price of a stock, this is what it is a discount model d1 divided by r minus g and what is your r? The r is the discount rate and this r gets affected whenever there is a change in interest rate. So, discount rate gets affected whenever there is a change in the interest rate. So, automatically the price of the particular stock also gets affected due to the interest rate. Let us think from the macro point of view. If you think from a macro point of view, what happens that if your there is money supply is interest rate we can increase, if interest rate will increase then the money supply will go down. If the money supply will go down then investment in the equity market will go down, then obviously it will have the impact on the output. It is a normal macroeconomic sense. But here, if you are putting in a simple dividend discount model or any discount flow model, we have seen that the interest rate has a clear cut impact on the cost of equity, but if the cost of equity gets affected, automatically the price of equity also gets affected. So, this is what the change in the interest rate will have a huge impact on the net income of the commercial banks and as well as the stock price performance of the bank. So, then if compares the sensitivity of interest income to changes in asset yields with the sensitivity of interest expenses to change in the interest cost of liabilities. Generally we call it the dollar gap analysis or the red sensitive analysis that we will discuss further. But this is what basically the how the interest rate basically affects that and we have to the bank has to develop a particular strategy how they can hedge that particular or reduce that interest rate risk in the particular system because anyway interest rate is going to be changed and predicting the direction of change in the interest rate is also relatively a very riskiest strategy in the financial system always uh, we know that. And from there also we can go for a uh, thorough analysis of the durations of assets and duration of liabilities which is called the duration gap analysis which is linked to the value of the equity that also we will discuss in detail. Uh, but the question here is that how exactly the interest rate or really the interest rate is going to affect the price of the stock and how the interest rate is going to affect the net interest income. If the interest rate changes will have the impact on these two which are supposed to be the indicators of the bank performance then the banks are basically exposed to the interest rate risk which is a part of the market risk. This is what basically what we are trying to discuss here. Then next is basically what uh, equity or security, security price risk. So, changes in the macroeconomic factors affect the market value of any equities, securities, the foreign currency holdings, the derivatives and other up balance sheet items. What does it mean? Any changes in the macroeconomic factors. For example, if you talk about the change in the GDP, growth rate of the GDP, which is basically considered real growth rate of the GDP is considered as the business cycle indicators. So, then if there is change in the business cycle, then it will have a huge impact on the demand and if the demand gets affected then we have supply side which is not that way not very changing in nature. 
So then what will happen? This will make a disbalance or disequilibrium in the system between the demand and supply. Then automatically the value of for any asset, for any asset the price is determined with a demand and supply. Equilibrium basically decided on the basis of the demand and supply. So, if there is any disruption in, in terms of demand or in terms of the supply, then automatically what will happen that the price gets affected. So, the price gets affected, then it will have a spillover impact on the different segments of the economy because all the economies are highly integrated. It, and once the spot positions gets affected, then obviously the products which are designed on the basis of the spot market like your derivatives instruments, their prices also get affected. So, even if you have many complex products like CBO, CDOs, there are many products what the banks have competed enough to use it in the system, but still the value of those products gets affected once the macroeconomic conditions in the system gets affected. So, macroeconomic fundamentals is the major reasons for creating the market risk in the system that includes the business cyclic factors, that includes interest rate that already we have discussed, that is the price stability, that is basically any 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 anything industrial productions, anything whenever any macroeconomic indicators change that will distort the balance sheet of the commercial bank and as well as the pricing of the assets what the banks are using for their investment to maximize their return. So, what these banks basically do? There are many methods are recognized by the different bodies, particularly the regulatory bodies including the central banks and as well as the Basel committees. They have recommended that a particular thorough empirical analysis has to be carried out that what methods has to be adopted by that in the beginning the bank can measure that particular risk and accordingly they can make their contingency planning or the corrective actions can be made. So, historically what we have observed? The large banks basically conduct the value at risk to assess the risk of loss with their portfolio of these trading assets and hold specific amount of capital in support of the market risk. And how the risk can be adjusted can be minimized by allocation of the capital. So, that is why capital allocation is a basic or an integral part of the risk management process. How much capital we can allocate to minimize that particular risk that also have to be considered. Small banks may not have that much expertise, what is value at risk and all that we will discuss in the next session. The small banks basically identify their exposure by conducting the sensitivity analysis. What do you mean by sensitivity analysis? The sensitivity analysis is nothing but that whenever we uh, try to kind of uh, scenario building that if something will change by a certain percentage, then how the other things gets changed in the different scenarios. So, because of that either we can go for a typical sophisticated risk modeling, risk methods to forecast the risk how we are going to expose towards that or we can make a scenario building by that this kind of risk can be measured in the beginning and we should be ready and the corrective actions can be made to get rid of this kind of risk in this particular system. So, this is what basically your equity or price risk uh, security price risk which arise due to the uh, uh, macroeconomic changes. Foreign exchange risk it is already a part of the macroeconomic fundamentals only. The changes in the foreign exchange rate affects the value of the assets, liabilities and off balance sheet activities which are dominated in the foreign currencies or denominated in the foreign currencies because the banks either have the operations in many countries because banks are only the uh, organization who does the foreign exchange business through banks only all those foreign exchange business basically always carried out or the banks have provided the loan to the different agencies who are exposed to the foreign exchange rate fluctuations. So, if there is a foreign exchange rate fluctuations obviously, the value of the other clients who have taken the loan those things get changed. If those things get changed they, they may not be able to repay the loan whatever they have taken from the bank or the bank might have the foreign exchange exposure. So, all those things in aggregate will distort the value or will change the value of the different kind of performance measures of the commercial bank. And as well as the off balance sheet items also gets affected like the value of derivatives, value of 
the loan uh, commitments, value of guarantees and all these things because of fluctuations in this data. So, when amount of asset differs from amount of liabilities, any change in exchange rate produces a gain or loss that affects the market value of a bank stockholders equity. End of the day, because the markets are integrated and the profitability has a relationship with the stock returns or the cash flow has a relationship with the stock returns, then once the cash flow gets affected, then automatically the equity prices of that particular bank gets affected. So, foreign exchange is a exchange rate fluctuations is a major factor which is affecting or which is uh, uh, basically creating or due to that the banks are basically exposed to the uh, different type of market risk in the system or market risk in the system and by that the balance sheet gets affected adversely on the basis of the fluctuations or if it is in the positive side maybe balance sheet gets affected positively but they are exposed to this particular foreign exchange rate risk. Then we have how basically if you see the off balance sheet items what basically we see the foreign exchange risk also found in off balance sheet loan commitments already I told you that loan commitments gets affected the guarantees gets affected and whenever this kind of thing basically gets affected we basically call them the foreign currency translation risk because we are basically converting into the foreign currency. Let I have the any commercial bank has given a loan guarantee or any kind of uh, services to an organization who based in based in foreign country. So, if there is and money has to be paid in terms of rupee the bank is situated in India. So, in that context if there is exchange rate fluctuations then obviously there is a rupee versus dollar or rupee versus pound that conversion changes. If those conversion changes then automatically what happens that the uh, total value of that particular system changes because we are translating that particular currency to another currency and because of the exchange rate fluctuations that particular conversion value gets changed. So, once that conversion value gets changed we are basically suffering from certain kind of risk in that particular system. A bank has a net exposure of each currency for which it book, books assets and liabilities. You see that for each type of business bank calculates the how much is the risk exposure towards that and if bank has the multiple business in terms of foreign currency then for each currency or multiple currencies are used for the uh, transactional activities then for each currency the exposure banks calculate and end of the day they aggregate that how much total risk exposure they have towards the different type of currencies what this particular business is uh, dominated or denominated that actually you have to keep in the mind. If it is highly denominated with respect to 4 currencies, 5 currencies for each currency they calculate the exposure and finally the total risk can be measured through that. Then the other important risk is operational risk. Then what do we mean by the operational risk? The operational risk basically what it refers to the possibility that the operating expenses might vary significantly from what is expected. There may be a deviation what is the expected operating expenses and what is the actual operating expenses which produces a deadline in the net income and the farm value any expenses any income of the commercial bank if it is gets changed then the final net income or the net profit or the value of the farm gets affected by that. So, according to the Basel committee if you, if you see how these operational risks are defined the operational risk is nothing but the risk which is resulting from inadequate or failed internal process which includes many things people system and from the external event. External event means it can be a natural calamity, it can be a government policy, it can be anything. So, whenever we talk about this we in aggregate and all the most of the variables are subjective in nature. 
but that is why the operational risk calculation is relatively difficult although Vessel has recommended certain approaches for that we will discuss further that one. But the question here is that whenever we talk about this we basically see that the operational risk is a combination of the many types of risk what the banks are exposed to. So, the combination of all segregation may not be possible ad, uh, in an adequate manner, but the aggregation can be possible in the sense that how much the exposure the commercial bank has towards that operational aspects that can be calculated in general and finally, we can consider that particular aspect for uh, the uh, while deciding the target of the commercial bank or while targeting the uh, particular return level or the risk for risk level or the profit level of the commercial bank. So, there if you see that uh, some banks are relatively inefficient in controlling the direct cost and employ processing errors. There are many errors sometimes inefficient employees are there and there are banks are not able to control the direct cost what they are incurring. So, then that time the operational cost of the bank increases. That means, it is also related to inefficiency of the employees. The same work can be done in 2 minutes, some employee is taking 20 minutes or employee is not that efficient or is not regular to the office or even if the employee is coming the productivity of the employee is very less. So, in that particular point of time the operating cost of the commercial bank increases. So, that is why that means it is one thing is inefficiency, inefficiency with respect to the controlling the direct cost and the processing errors for the employees paid that is a first source of the operational risk. And second one is which is very uh, unique in nature, bank also must absorb the shocks due to employee thefts and the fraud and nowadays the frauds are increasing like anything in across the financial system. The because of the different behavioral biases and the greed and all these things makes the system more unethical and because of that the frauds are increasing and why the Basel committee has given much importance to operational risk. The reason is the probability of fraud or the occurrence of the fraud, fraud in, the, in the commercial banking sector or in general in the financial sector has gone up and the fraud leads to a high level of risk in the system and theft is a part of that, but it may not occur every time, but the fraud is happening frequently if you have many examples in the system nowadays that which basically uh, has witnessed many frauds which is happening in the system. So, because of that also the operational cost of the bank increases and the banks are suffering from the operational risk for that. It is also related to operating policies and, uh, and process to understand whether the bank is adequately control those things or not. Losses from external events like electrical failure or technical failure, these are easy to identify but difficult to forecast. When the failure will be there, for, for example, you might have gone to the bank, bank will say the your transactions or your we cannot provide you the services services because there is a system failure. There is no connectivity. In the online banking system, we are more confined towards the uh, also we are thinking about the connectivity and all these things. They said there is no connectivity. In that particular point of time, it is very difficult that what exactly uh, the customer, how the customer will get to, get to get the services and how the banks basically is really try to minimize that particular cost. So, or natural calamities, something some flood has taken place, there is heavy rain because of that, there is some problem with respect to that particular branch, there, there, and there are many things which can create the particular problem to the system. 
So, because of that what happens that in general the operating cost increases and by that the uh, what we can say that the total profit of the organization or the commercial bank gets affected. Then we have another thing it is difficult to measure the directly the operational cost, but it is likely to be greater the higher the number of divisions or subsidiaries employees or the loans to the insiders. If you want to measure the operating risk historically the measures of operational efficiency and expense control or productivity proxy is total asset for employee that means it shows the employee productivity that already productivity ratio that already we have discussed the total personal expenses per employee per employee how much expenses we are making that means it shows that whether the employees are efficient enough to generate the profit or the revenue for the organization or not and the unexpected losses or risk which can arise due to the business interruptions transaction processing inadequate information system the breaches in the internal internal controls and the client liability so one by one if you see that how basically it works or what is the different examples related to this. The business interruption means it is a loss to the loss or damage to the asset, the facilities, systems or the people anything can happen with respect to the interruptions in the business of that particular bank. Transaction may be transaction has been failed or because of the connectivity it is late or the settlement wrongly somebody has made a wrong settlement again the settlement has to be reverted back for that we are consuming time we are consuming we are incurring cost for that employee we are also consuming certain cost with respect to correctness of the machines and all these things the transaction processing is also can increase because of that inadequate information system sometimes the informations are hacked site is hacked or other people got the information because of that who takes care or maybe took that advantage to get the benefit out of this and but which has a adverse impact on the bank's profitability so because of that that's why security is a major concern nowadays there are many online frauds there are many cyber crimes which are happening and the sometimes the bank is bearing lot of losses because of that and bank is able to uh, is not able to forecast those things in the beginning because of that there is no such provisioning is made within the commercial bank for this and what they are exposed to this kind of risk uh, always fraud theft and unauthorized activities sometimes uh, we have seen that the uh, the activities which are happening that is beyond the power of that particular bank sometimes the services or the letter of credit has been issued which is not in the purview of that particular bank but again there is, there is something goes wrong then the commercial banks are incurring a huge loss we have the examples on this uh, and that also leads to the uh, the adverse impact on the profitability and as well as the value of the equity because that creates a larger impact on the sentiment of the investors who are investing in that bank stock then we have the client liability which is uh, uh, rest, uh, basically we can say that uh, reputation loss or the uh, we can say that uh, the payments basically what they want to make they can stop this or they can withdraw their money then by that this is basically uh, increases the uh, uh, availability of the money with the bank or they are exposed to more risk in terms of the operational activities that also leads to the more operational risk. So, this is what these are the ways the sources of operational risk can be defined or this is the way this can be measured in a, in a, in a raw sense or in a simpler sense, but the actual there are different approaches what recommendations Basel committee has given that we will discuss in the forthcoming sessions. So, what we have discussed that uh, market risk arises due to the change in interest rate, stock price fluctuations, foreign exchange rate changes. The high interest rate risk manifests itself through mismatched maturities and durations between assets and liabilities. 
because it has adverse impact on the balance sheet or income statement of the commercial banks. High operational risk appears with operational cost being out of control or significant unexpected changes which are happening in the system. So, this can happen due to the internal failure, inefficiency of the employees, external forces, then we have the frauds, we have the theft, we have the technical failure, all these things are the major sources of the operational risk uh, always we can observe in the system and because of that the bank's total risk can increase. In the forthcoming sessions, we will discuss about other types of risk like liquidity risk, capital risk, solvency risk, reputation risk, legal risk, etcetera. And for today's discussion, you can go through these are the different references. For the detailed discussion, you can also uh, see these books. Thank you.